Hi Year 3, so it's now time for our story. Now we're going to carry on reading um, James and the Giant Peach. Um, on Friday we got up to chapter 6 and in chapter 6 James and his two evil aunties spotted a giant peach growing on the tree after James had spilled his magical um, beans uh, under the peach tree. So I think something magical is happening to that peach tree now, do you? So let's start with chapter seven. <clears throat> the two women and the small boy stood absolutely still on the grass underneath the tree, gazing up at this extraordinary fruit. James's little face was glowing with excitement. His ears were as big as two big bright stars. He could see the peach swelling larger and larger, as clearly as if they were both being balloons being blown up. In half a minute, it was the size of a melon. In another half a minute, it was twice as big again. Just look at it growing, Aunt Spiker cried. Will it ever stop? Aunt Sponge um, shouted, waving her fat arms and starting to dance around in circles. And now it was so big, it looked like an enormous butter-coloured pumpkin dangling from the top of the tree. Get away from that tree trunk, you stupid boy, Aunt Spiker yelled. The slightest shake and I'm sure it will fall off. It must weigh 20 or 30 pounds at least. The branch that the peach was growing on was beginning to bend over further and further because of the weight. Stand back, Aunt Bun shouted. It's coming down. The branch, it's going to break. But the branch didn't break. It simply bent over more and more as the peach got heavier and heavier. And it still went on growing. In another minute, the mammoth fruit was as large and round as fat Aunt Bun herself and probably just as heavy. It has to stop now, Aunt Spiker yelled. It can't go on forever. But it didn't stop. Soon it was the size of a small car and reached halfway to the ground. Both ants were now hopping round and hopping around the tree, clapping their hands and shouting all sorts of silly things in their excitement. Hallelujah, Aunt Spiker shouted. What a peach, what a peach. Terrific, Aunt Sponge cried out. Magnifico. Splendifico, and what a meal. It's still growing, I know, I know. As for James, he was spellbound by the whole thing, that he could only stand there and stare and murmur quietly to himself. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Shut up, you little twerp, Aunt Spiker snapped, happening to overhear him. It's none of your business. That's right, Aunt Sponge declared. It's got nothing to do with you whatsoever. Keep out of it. And there you can see them a little bit in the black and white picture at the bottom and the huge, great big peach on the tree. Look, Aunt Spiker shouted. It's growing faster than ever now. It's speeding up. I see it, Spiker. I do, I do. Bigger and bigger grew the peach. Bigger and bigger and bigger. Then at last, when it had become nearly as tall as the tree that it was growing on, as tall and wide, in fact, as a, a small house, the bottom part gently touched the ground, and there it rested. It can't fall off now, Aunt Sponge sp shouted. It's stopping growing, Aunt Spiker cried. No, it hasn't. Yes, it has. It's slowing down, Spiker. It's slowing down. But it hasn't stopped yet. You watch it. There was a pause. It has now. I believe you're right. Do you think it's safe to touch it? I don't know, but we'd better be careful. Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker began walking slowly round the peach, inspecting it very carefully from all sides. They were like a couple of hunters who had just shot an elephant and were not quite sure whether it was dead or alive. And the massive round fruit towered over them so high that they looked like midgets from another world beside it. The skin of the peach was very beautiful, a rich buttery yellow with patches of brilliant pink and red. Aunt Sponge ad advanced cautious cautiously and touched it with the tip of one finger. It's ripe, she cried. It's just perfect. Now look here, Spiker, why don't we go and get a shovel right away and dig out a great big chunk of it for you and me to eat? No, Aunt Spiker said, not yet. Why ever not? Because I say so. But I can't wait to eat some, Aunt Sponge cried out. She was watering at the mouth now and a thin trickle of spit was running down one side of her chin. Mm. 
My dear sponge, Aunt Spiker said slowly, winking at her sister and smiling a sly. Then there's a pile of money to be made out of this. If only we can handle it right. You wait and see. Uh oh, I think they've got a bit of devious plan going on there. So that was chapter seven and we will read um, chapter eight tomorrow at the end of the day. I hope you have a brilliant day tomorrow and you've enjoyed your learning today. Bye for now.